how do I put this into words? Like, how, like when we, like when our hearts actually believe this and feel this, the weight that comes off is, it's remarkable. Like it's, it's crazy. What is up, you guys? <laughs> Welcome back to the You Can Sit With Us podcast. I'm Brittany. And I'm Bridget. And you always, always have, have a seat, seat at, at our table. table. Metaphoric table. Um, but we're so happy to be here again. Yes. Episode two of season three. Yay. I don't know about y'all, but I'm super excited. Yes. So today we're talking about a really fun topic and we're going to be talking about... Ooh, drum roll, please. I don't know if that's good. <laughs> Dave is a drummer. That's our producer for any newbies on here. Um, he's a great drummer in my opinion but <laughs> wow <laughs> but um our topic for today is single parenting that was so um <laughs> anticlimactic but yeah we're gonna be talking about single parenting so don't click out of this out of this yet if you're not a single parent Listen, this episode might still be for you. It might still bless you if you have been raised by a single parent, if you know a single parent, Mm -hmm. but especially if you are a single parent, we really believe that this episode is going to bless you because I think things that we don't relate to personally that we haven't walked through, it's even more important for us to learn about them and to hear from people who have gone through it in different angles that way. Just as a society, we can bear each other's burdens more, be more compassionate and Jesus literally god in the flesh put on flesh to be able to relate to us so yeah. why shouldn't we do the same to be able to understand other yeah. people's struggles and and challenges and desires and yeah. realities yeah so, and it's yeah. it's something so like you said reality is something that's so common unfortunately yeah that is something that's so common um and i feel like i i feel like our like core is to talk about real topics talk Absolutely. about like real things that really do happen you know what i mean like we don't put a band-aid over things Mm -hmm. like um that's not our walk with the lord and that's what we're here for yeah you know that's especially things that they don't really talk much about in church or topics that are taboo seen as taboo in christianity and the church and even in society um and the culture so showing like what it looks like to talk about popular topics in culture but from a kingdom minded perspective um so without further ado y'all know what time it is what's your favorite thing 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 shouty so my favorite thing um i think dave is like tired of this song already we should have the clappy lights what's your favorite thing 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 <laughs> got the whole light show and everything mm, we legit now <laughs> but right. um what's your favorite thing this week so my favorite thing is a song and okay. i literally can't stop listening to this wait song. can i guess what it is you probably already know I, it's the song that everyone's loving right now probably i don't so know so good no but i do love okay, that song okay. no 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 um Okay, so this is the thought that came to my my mind before I tell y'all what's my favorite song. So, you know, I think, I don't know if Apple Music does this, but mm-hmm. Spotify does it at the end of every year. Yes. It tells you what song you listen to the mm-hmm. absolute most. I really think it's going to be the song. Okay. Because, like, the That's amount. So crazy. I literally just thought about that earlier, about really? what my one was last year mm-hmm. was Wait On You, which was mm-hmm. weird because by the end of the year, I didn't realize that that was my most listened to song, but it makes so much sense and yeah. crazy, like, just the season of life, yeah. the way God works, and that's so yeah, cool. But yeah, continue. My last last year, I think mine was Old Church Basement, which I was very surprised. Mm, I love that you song. You loved that song. I, yeah, I love that song. But then my number two was Believe For It, which yeah. if you know me, you know that that's my God, song. we believe. <laughs> oh, girl. God, we believe <laughs> for it. Auto-tune that, Dave, because you know. For our audience. Oh, no, I'm Actually, can you? Can you auto-tune that? That would be really cool and just make me sound like I can really sing. All right, continue. Um, but, okay, so my favorite song um, uh, was, or is, <laughs> funny me, is um, You Will Be Saved by Elevation Rhythm. Mm. I yes, love that this. song. Like, it's just, it's, I think, honestly, like, this, I think it's like a mini season or just how God is, like, really uh, revealing himself to me at this moment is he's reminding me of, 
of who he is and like what he has done in my life. Like I just keep seeing patterns um, mm -hmm. of this that he just keeps depositing into my mind and my heart and is depositing that much more gratitude, you know? Um, I can I can name a, a number of occasions, but that song reminds me of, of course, the gospel, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. But like of before, before, Christ my life before Christ and then my, my life now in Christ and it's just like it just it hits my heart to a deep level and I mean I can get deeper to like why I love that song mm -hmm. but another day for that <laughs> but yeah so that's my favorite thing is you will be saved by elevation rhythm I think it's new if I'm not mistaken but so far I'm, I'm pretty much liking that whole album I love that mm -hmm. What's your I can't say thing? I have it I have listened to that song or even that album that much I've been going back to like my older songs. Mm -hmm. I think I think my most played song this year is going to be "Come Again" by uh, Really Magic City. Yeah. Oh wow, that's like that's I back in the day. Love well, not back in the day, that. But, like know. I've always loved it, but like I don't know, I just love it. Yeah. Like yeah, just my go-to. Okay, my favorite thing this week is relevant to the topic that we're gonna be talking about today, and it is this little um, devotional. I guess devotional, right? That's what mm -hmm. this would be. Mm -hmm. um, or a resource. Yeah, from the Daily Grace Co. As y'all know, yeah, huge know. advocate. We yes. do have an affiliate code. I will have um, a link below. I'm not sure if we have a discount code, but maybe we can try and get that for you guys. Yeah. We'll try. But um, it just, if you're going to shop on there, it costs you nothing to click our link, but it will really help us because we do get a tiny little commission, um, which really will go back into the podcast and making it just better uh, quality for you guys uh, because we want to give you guys the best of the best. Absolutely. So I literally, oh my gosh, when I first moved here and I found yes. the Daily Grace Co. and I put everyone on, like yes. we were obsessed. Yeah. Yes, like, like we had every to like week. keep each other accountable no, seriously. of like, okay, don't buy anything else until you finish everything you bought. Like <laughs> yes. I have stacks of their <laughs> Bible studies, um, theology handbooks, like all of their handbooks, like so much. Yeah. And it's just a great Christian resource. They have an amazing podcast. Um, I'm not getting paid to say any of this. We really just nah, love it that much. Seriously, that good. Like love I, it. I um, led a whole small group just based off of yeah. one of the uh, devotionals that mm -hmm. that they did, and it was amazing the way that god led that yeah. that small group just simply along with that with yeah. that resource i don't know their exact mission statement but all of their content is based off of being keeping the gospel at the right. center um but they really have such a good balance of grace and truth yes which y'all know we are super big on um mm -hmm. highly recommend them mm -hmm. they even have uh children's resources mm -hmm. for all of the parents out there i love their children's books i'm looking at some of the books right now i have um god cares how you feel it's all about emotions there's one that uh is a story from eden to eternity and it like breaks it down like a children's book and i've learned from those mm. and been blessed by them because it really breaks it down in a way that a child can understand yeah. it so my favorite thing this week is this gospel-centered motherhood little um bible study devotional and um it's it's really good it's it goes on different topics about uh motherhood and i'll just name some of the chapters so a woman's highest calling um and it dives into what is a woman's highest calling it might be motherhood or or is it let's talk about it that's kind of what the topic is about motherhood is a calling uh in his word in every season discipleship in the home dying to self is the way to joy guarding our marriages encouragement for single moms the heart issue behind mom guilt uh encouragement for the little years the older years perseverance being a praying mom discipline does it take a village personal conscience the power of words and emotions like wow. so good i am going to go through this until forever yeah even when my child and future children are like out of the house i'm still gonna go back to yeah, this because really you never good. stop being a mother and even if you're not a mother in the physical i'm sure you are a mother spiritually or some way to someone so yeah. highly recommend i'm actually going to be uh, referencing to this a little bit throughout the episode so yeah yeah oh my gosh that um makes me excited to even like look into it myself like to read for mm -hmm. it just because like um if you know me you know that i just have like a nurturing personality so that would help even answer some of my own questions because yeah. like you know i just i love to nurture and take care of <laughs> yeah like a mom well before we get into the full-on convo if you are interested in content like this where we talk about candid we talk about taboo topics 
and difficult things that we go through but from a kingdom minded perspective in a way that really draws you closer to God and helps you just grow more as a person and just to become more of the person that God has created you to be then make sure you hit that subscribe button if you're watching on YouTube hit the bell so you don't miss a video that we upload uh and if you're listening on audio platforms what shall I do hit review Mm -hmm. and follow us on the uh, I think there's a button, if not at the top of the episode or at the bottom, but uh, make sure to hit follow. And uh, please, if you really find it in your heart to leave us a review, it really helps the algorithm Absolutely. and to really spread our message. And it's not really just our message. It's the message that uh, the Lord placed in our hearts to share for all of you. Um, and it really just helps us spread the gospel um, uh, beyond our limits. Mm-hmm. So we really appreciate that. Um, pray about it if you need to. But um, we can't do this without God and without you guys. So we love you. We love you guys. Let's dive in. Okay, so in the heart of talking about single parenting, I think we first got to talk about the struggles Mm. and our experiences. So I was raised by a single mom. I've mentioned this a lot before. Um, My dad was never in the picture uh, since I was like four. Yeah. So. And my mom is still a single mom, and I'm 29-ish. <laughs> I was like, how old am I, <laughs> Lord? Um, and now I am a single mom. I've been a single mom for two years now. So th- that's been my experience with it. Uh, what has been your experience? So I'm not a mom yet, but my biggest experience has been being a child of a single mom. Mm-hmm. And um, the way I've, I have observed uh, the challenges that it has brought. And not only that, like also like – um, the past two years, seeing my best friend be a single yeah. mom, that has also, um, the the observation that I've been able to witness has definitely done an impact, but in a way where so much compassion mm-hmm. has grown from there, you know, um, that helps me be a better friend, you know, be a better sister in Christ, mm-hmm. and a better daughter to my mom and the king. <laughs> Amen. That's real. Yeah. I love how there's so many different angles that like tie into this because yeah. motherhood is really like a depiction of of God as our parent, right. you know. Oh my and gosh, yeah. um, first, I want to talk about like just the stigma of single parenting, especially single moms, but just single parenting in general in society. I feel like there is this stigma that single parents are bitter, mm. are like poor vulnerable like in need of help which in many ways it is true however to hold single parents to that um that image is very limiting and unfair yeah and i also think it gets even worse when we get into the church because obviously we know that like single parenting isn't god's design but it's the reality of many. And so we we do deserve a place yeah. in the church, right? And it's sad that it's hard um, to find that. Yeah. And I think that if you have a burden on your heart for single parents, whether you are a single parent or you just have a burden on your heart for it, um, more of us need to step into making, talking about it and like make, changing things up, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and I think a lot of the, the stigmas have a lot of truth to them. But the thing is, it's never that that simple. Like, we have to dive deeper into it. So, for example, I have some notes right here. Um, Like, being a single parent, especially speaking from being a single mom, there's a lot of fears that come with that. Being vulnerable, in a sense, yes, because my... When you're just a young, single adult, all you have to worry about is yourself. Right. But when you have a child, now you have to worry about them. And if you're married, you worry about your spouse too. But you can share that burden with your spouse. But Mm -hmm. when you don't have that partner and you're taking care of your child or children, Mm -hmm. it gets multiplied because now you're you're responsible for your well being and theirs. Yeah. And it's that's a lot of pressure for one person. So it it's it's scary. Like everything, even going through COVID and like the fear of the unknown of like now there's this worldwide virus how am i going to protect my children and it can just trigger so much anxiety and just childhood trauma in you and just there's so much to it yeah um fears of economic insecurity because you're living off of one income obviously you know if you have a partner or a co-parent who's helping but even then it's never the same as like being in the same family in the same household Mm -hmm. 
being taken advantage of, dating, dating in general as a single parent, but dating someone who turns out to be a jerk, dealing with like your child being like attached to them or, or God forbid, if something happens to your yeah, child in that, by yeah, that. yeah, that's so scary. Um, the fear of you dying and then like your child not having someone there, like that's scary. There's so much to it. Um, and then feeling like you're, you're broken or like you have a broken home, a broken family. Um, have you ever ex- like felt like that? Like the weight of feeling like a, you have a broken family? Oh, yeah. And I already, like as you were talking, I already felt myself like getting emotional. I know y'all love that, but. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, fair warning. I might be the one who cries in this one. Yes. Lord. Ooh, Lord. Yes. And I'm like, please let it be you, not me this time. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, absolutely. And I actually think I realized that kind of early on like like pretty young like as you were saying all those um heavy yeah real things that you mentioned um I feel like I observed that and honestly like maybe I even intern internalized it a little bit I don't know I I feel like it's a gift from God at how he's created me to the way that I feel other people's pain absolutely yeah. um it's it's different it's mm-hmm. I say it's weird right now um, but maybe in a few years, I can give you the testimony of how God has um, used it and revealed this aspect of it. But yeah, I definitely do feel like I have learned that since I was young because I observed my mom, like mm-hmm. every, all of that, literally all of that. Yeah. Um, she was single for, she still to this day, she's single because she was so scared that if she would have um, gotten in a relationship with a guy and they would have did something to her kids. Mm-hmm. Like she was like, I'm not going to put my, ri- my children's lives at risk like that. Um, and she was always single because she's like, I don't want my kids to get traumatized, all this good stuff. So I learned that she didn't always have, she didn't um, only have had to provide for us, like, you know, feed us mm-hmm. and dress us and all that stuff. She had to protect us. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I learned everything just from my mom. Mm-hmm. I learned that she had to protect us, provide for us, uh, nurture us. She had to teach us. Yeah. Like, everything relied on her. Mm-hmm. So then, um, you know, and as a kid, like, that ended up becoming a norm. Um, it's just like, oh, okay, like, my family is just my mom, my brother, and me. Okay. Like, you know. And then, uh, which we could dive into maybe later on in the, in the episode as we go along. Um, whenever my dad was in the picture from time to time, it just felt very foreign. Yeah. It just felt so foreign. I'm like, yeah. what is this? What are you trying to do? Wait, hold on. You don't yes. have to do that. My mom does that. Like, you know what I mean? Um, so, yeah, it was like, it was weird. It was yeah. different. I'm just like, why is my family like this? Like, is it was definitely a, a dilemma that I felt mm-hmm. very young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for me, I can relate. Like, in elementary school, my parents split when I was four, so... I went into elementary school already being in, in a single um, parent household. You as well, right? No, I actually never grew up with my dad. Oh, he was never in your life? No. Mm-mm. He was only in my life Even sometimes. When, like, so like when you were born? Yeah, never. Um, I don't want to oh, get wow. too, too vulnerable. But um, I don't think I knew that. Oh, maybe I did. I just forgot. Yeah. See? Still date <laughs> your friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we actually, uh, I was born in Queens, New mm-hmm. York. But because of some issues, some uh, family issues, uh, we had to move to Staten Island uh, when I was two. Okay. So, yeah, he was, to my recollection, okay. uh, no. He yeah. was just only in my life, like, sometimes when mm-hmm. my mom and him would get back together. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, we both went into elementary school like that. Mm-hmm. You went to a school in the hood, though. Yes, always. And so, my first elementary school, pre-K and kindergarten, was, like, in the hood. And sadly, it's just more common in the yeah. hood for to be raised by a single mom. Um, but then my mom wanted me to go to a better school, so we lied about my address. <laughs> and she put me into a, a predominantly <laughs> white so school funny. in a much better neighborhood. Um, if you're from, from Staten Island, it was in Westerly, PS30, stand up. <laughs> remind, me, remind me to tell a funny story about that same school. PS30? Oh No, yeah. PS45. Oh, 45. Yeah, I went PS to PS30 45. for a majority of my elementary school, uh, and then okay. I went to 45. Okay, okay. But anyway, so PS30, it was predominantly white, which statistically, predominantly white neighborhoods, families, they have more families, two-parent households. Yeah. And, you know, regular soccer mom life, and mom is a stay-at-home mom and actually picks up their kid at 3 p.m., and, and dad is a firefighter or a doctor or a lawyer or a Wall Street, you know, <laughs> and, like, they come in for, like, what is that, like, uh, parent-teacher conference, and, like, the and... when the parents come to school, career day or whatever, yeah. things like that, and, like, I think that's when I first noticed that, like, oh, 
I felt the reality of coming from a broken home, like at a young age. Yeah. Um, and it was hard. Like, and <laughs> I'm sorry. I was not expecting that. <laughs> and <laughs> It was hard. It was hard seeing, like, all the other kids have their dads for, like, father-daughter oh, dance girl. or, like, mm. all these things. And, it, it like, I remember, now that I know what depression feels like, yeah. I was depressed at a young age because, like, my family was broken. And, and it was a pretty traumatic um, time when my mom and dad were together, too. So that yeah. adds on to it. But that's the thing about trauma is, like, when you – trauma is so much more than, like, being hurt by things, right? It's, like – not being able to operate and develop and function and live normally. Yeah. And that's the hard part about it because, like, even when you said when your dad would come back into the picture, it was like Who are when you? he's what not there, it? you're like, oh, like, I wish I had my mommy and my daddy in my yeah. life. But then he comes and you're like, oh, wait, no. Like, this is weird. I don't even know you. Like, who mm -hmm. are you trying to act like you yeah. have a parental, like, authority over me, but you've never even been in my yeah. life. Like, do you even know my favorite color? Yeah. So it's like Like, you wasn't weird... with me shooting in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> For real, though. Uh, it's like this weird, like, complexity, you know, where it's broken and you know it's broken and you wish it was better, but then it's like, oh, but maybe this really is my reality and, like, the way God wants to use yeah. my story. Yeah. So, yeah, just remember from being a kid, like, all just the, the realities of seeing everyone have have that and it yeah. just felt like they could function and be normal kids yeah. and worry about kid things but because i saw my mom struggle and like children pick up on on their parents yeah, like they know when you're not good and going through it and and that's really hard for a child to see and then i think our parents generation too they were so focused on providing yes that that awareness of the emotional weight and right. implications of things wasn't really there right um, but yeah, it just led to so much struggles in my adulthood. And, yeah. um, the point is there, there's hope though. Like there's hope with God. Like he is a father to the fatherless. Like he is a mother to the motherless. As weird as that sounds, he is our parent and he is literally everything we need. Yeah. And having a broken family, it's a reality for many, but it doesn't have to be a reality forever. Like don't stay Amen. stuck there. Don't keep yourself limited to oh i just come from a broken family oh my family is just broken if you're mm -hmm. a single parent now like god is a god of redemption exactly. that is the gospel story he exactly. redeemed humanity to be again a one with him and in communion and relationship with him and so why couldn't he do that in your physical family yeah you know? exactly i think um that holds so much power like i man but like <laughs> here we go again <laughs> here we go here we go stop dang it i was trying i was trying i was trying but that holds so much on weight but in the best way possible because and girl you know exactly how this feels like the lack of love when we don't have our dad in, in our lives and then when we realize that God is our heavenly father mm. and he is enough yeah and just how much he loves us like when we really like like yeah in capture like how do I put this into words like how, like when we like when our hearts actually believe this and feel this the weight that comes off is it's remarkable. Like, mm -hmm. it's it's crazy, you know? And, like, every single time I think about, like, the words that you were just saying, like, and, and the truth that it is that he is enough, that he is our, he like, he's our father, always makes me emotional because yeah. um, you mentioned how um, you noticed early on um, when he was in your life and then when he wasn't in your life and how much, like, you, you know, you want him there and stuff like that. Like, I actually didn't notice that until later on in, in my life, like, until I was, like, an adult. Um, because as a kid, it was so normal to me for it to just be my mom and my brother and, oh, yeah, and me, same, you know? Yeah. And so, like, I was actually upset that my dad would come back. So it always, it always just hits my heart because it's, like, um, I had so much bitterness i guess yeah. in my heart mm. you know yeah, because so my dad wasn't in my life like that that when i really grasped yeah. that 
God loves me and he's my father. And then when I think back of how he's provided, how he's protected me, how he's been there, how just everything is like, wow, like I really, I, I had you all along, you know what I mean? Like you are nothing compared to like my earthly father, um, but in the best way possible, like, you yeah. know, so it just, it, it just always hits home for me. For sure. You know? I mean, that's so real. Cause like the first encounter I had with God was experiencing him as my father. That yeah. was the first real like wound in my heart that yes. I felt him heal was like at the moment of my salvation when I professed that Jesus is my Lord and I believed it. Like I can't tell you how quickly he started working on that father, like that daddy issue wound. Yeah. And even when I started first go started going through therapy, I was 20, like really going through therapy. I was 22, 24, 24, I think. Mm. And um, that was the first thing we really dove into, like the daddy issues, like writing a letter to him, letting all out my feelings, all this stuff, and just seeing how God showed up in that way and redeemed so much of it. Um, but I want to emphasize the part where you said the bitterness. Yeah. Like, I really think for me growing up, I was so mad yes, at my too. life. Mm. now I realize that me being mad at my life and my circumstances is really me being mad at God mm. because he is in control of my circumstances. Mm -hmm. So me saying, why am I in this family? Why don't I have my dad in my life? Why do we struggle financially? Why is this always, why are there always issues in my family? Yeah. Like these things, like being mad about those things and being stuck there is really one staying in a victim mindset. And yeah. like, why is this happening to me rather than, shifting your perspective which i learned to do now of not why is this happening to me but god what can i use this for you know what are wow, you trying to really show good. me what are you trying to reveal in me and in the world and how can i learn from this and how can i become better and think about this in a better way and become healthier yeah. and staying in that bitter place hardens your heart where you don't even allow god in mm. you know and so i grew up my whole childhood and teen years like so mad at god because i was just like I was just dealt, you know, sucky hand of cards or whatever yeah. uh, at life. And I'm just doing my best. It is what it is. But in the moment where I softened my heart and I allowed God in, mm -hmm. he redeemed so much of yeah. that. And I really want to go to scripture um, because, man, this story just brings me so much peace. Like, Knowing that the first per person in the Bible, correct me if I'm wrong, I would like to be corrected. But as far as I know, the first person in the Bible who kind of like proclaims a name for God is a single mom. Mm. And I think that's so profound. Like we're out here like struggling. Like do people see us or like do they know what we go through? Society has stigmas. It's hard. It's hard to provide, especially in this day and age. It's, it's hard mm -hmm. to provide for for your children, for your family as a single parent, but it's so reassuring and um, just encouraging to see that in scripture, one of the first times we see God um, reveal himself or yeah, scripture like revealing God as um, the God who sees us is in um, an instance with a single mom. So it's in Genesis, the first book of the Bible, chapter 16, and it's about Hagar and Ishmael. So super quick backstory um sarai and abram who abram is the the father of the abrahamic religion so judaism christianity and islam and uh all of his descendants you know pretty much led to to jesus mm -hmm. and um they were promised a child and that he would have uh descendants like as many as the stars essentially mm -hmm. and it's crazy because they waited and waited years and years and sarai could not conceive and so they started to doubt God's promise, which is a whole nother conversation. Mm -hmm. And so they took it in matters into their own hands. And Sarai pretty much um, encouraged Abram to impregnate their servant, Hagar. Um, and when he did that, she conceived and bore a son named Ishmael. And then when she had the child, Sarai saw that Abram was giving her and the child so much attention that she started to feel jealous and started tr mistreating mm -hmm. Hagar really badly. And and this is, I feel like we can even relate. There's so much in this story um, about just single motherhood and single parenting and just motherhood in general. Um, so it says right here, so because 
Hagar was being mistreated so, so badly, she fled. The angel, then the angel of the Lord found Hagar. This is um, chapter 16, verse 7. The angel of the Lord found Hagar near a spring in the desert. It was the spring that is beside the road to Shur. And he said, Hagar, slave of Sarai, Sarai, where have you come from and where are you going? She says, I'm running away. Then the angel of the Lord told her, go back to your mistress and submit to her. The angel added, I will increase your descendants so much that they will be too numerous to count. And the angel of the Lord said to her, you are now pregnant and you will give birth to a son. You shall name him Ishmael for the Lord has heard your misery. Um, and then it goes on in uh, verse 13. It says, she gave the name to the Lord who spoke to her. You are the God who sees me. And we know of that name as El Roy. For she said, I have now seen the one who sees me. That is why the well was called Bear Lahai Roy. I don't know if I said that right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I just, I highlighted those parts because there's so much there. Like yeah. where it says where the angel of the Lord said, where have you come from and where are you going? It reminds me of when Adam um, like hid from God in mm-hmm. the Garden of Eden. Mm-hmm. And God was like, where are you? Mm-hmm. God is a, all knowing, right? He knew where he was. Mm-hmm. It wasn't like, a, oh, like out of confusion because God is not a good God of confusion. It wasn't out of him not knowing because he knows everything. It was concern, his care. It was him showing that he cares. Like, where do, what are you doing? Yeah. Where are you going? Like, even though technically, like, you fell short, I still want you to come to me. Like, mm-hmm. I'm still approachable. Yes, you like, know? I'm here. Yeah, I'm here. I love that. Like, what is a better depiction of a good parent than yeah, that, you know? Exactly. Um, and then when the angel of the Lord says to her, go back and submit, that is God telling her what to do, giving her guidance, providing for her and protecting her because when we, it's not what she wanted to do. You think she wanted to go back to her abuser? Mm, Absolutely wow. not. And justifiably so, but God knew that that's what was going to be best for her. And so her submitting to God's plan is going to be better than her trying to do what she thinks is best out of her own hurt you know and then it says for the lord has heard of your misery like that's just so encouraging to know that he hears our cries like there's so many moments in motherhood in parenting especially single parenting and you know you be here you be hearing my misery (laughs) every day (laughs) lord it's rough especially if you have little kids like two to five lord yeah there's so many unseen moments that are so hard like you're just sitting there for me for example putting my child to bed yeah my girl gets beat beat up literally every night. like it's rough every night and um you have to be so in control of your own emotions so that you don't react and cause them trauma yeah um while you're healing your own inner child wounds and you're you you know that you have someone else's childhood in your hands and you want to protect it and steward yeah. it well but also not put so much pressure on yourself to beat yourself up but there's so many moments that are hard where you break down and you're both your child is throwing a tantrum <laughs> and you're right there crying with them and i just get so much peace and encouragement and reassurance yeah. knowing that god sees me no one else knows that when I get to work at 9 a.m., what I had to go through for the past two, three yeah. hours. You know what I mean? Yeah. And and it gets annoying to always have to say, like, I had a rough morning with my child. But, mm-hmm. like, trusting that God sees that and that he's going to redeem that, especially your faithfulness in those moments, mm-hmm. like, that's all that matters. Yeah. And have has your love for Sage changed after she beats you up? Oh, a thousand percent. What do like, you mean? Well, like, okay. <laughs> like, wait, hold on. So, so... My love for her hasn't changed, <laughs> but my perspective on mm-hmm. my love for her has mm-hmm. changed. Like, she's a child. Like, no, it doesn't change at all. And that, right. but my love for God and my, the way I express my love to her has changed because in those moments where she's literally screaming, crying, kicking me, hitting me, which is not okay, mm-hmm. but um, it's also not okay to hit your child back if right. they're hitting oh, you, you know? So, like, and naturally, as a human, if someone hits you, yeah. your instinct is to be like, like yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm hit back. <laughs> but Jesus exemplifies like when your enemy hits you, I forget the exact scripture, and he says when they hit you on like your right cheek or whatever, turn the cheek, turn mm-hmm. the cheek, give them the other one. Mm-hmm. Um, and that just gave me a whole new meaning the other night specifically. I was trying to put her to bed. She was kicking, screaming, crying, like hitting me. And literally I felt God speak to me about like, hey, 
this is what we do all the time with him. Yes. Like that was exactly where uh we scream, we cry sometimes, literally sometimes spiritually Mm -hmm. because we want something so bad. She, she needed to go to bed and she really wanted, um, to stay up candy. Mm. She really wanted candy. And I'm like, no, you're Mm. not getting candy. Like, that's not good for you. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. You're going to bed. And she cried for an hour. And, even though I'm knowing what's best for her, providing what's best for her, because I know she's so much better when she's well-rested, she wanted to stay up. She wanted candy, things that can harm her. Mm. And so she's hitting me, hurting me. And how many times do we wrestle with God, curse him, yep. you know, blatantly sin against him, yep. break his heart? But yet, guess what he does? He doesn't retaliate. He doesn't hit us back. He doesn't punish us in a sense of like, oh, you hit me, now I'm going to hit you back, or mm-hmm. I'm going to take this away from yep. you. He literally sits there with open arms, takes it, and says, like, let it out, my child. Like, I am here. I am going to still be here. I still love you. I still see you as, you know, a beautiful, my beautiful creation. And I want to protect you. I want to ease your hurt. I want to... I want you to be happy, but I'm not going to do it because I'm a God who cares. I'm a God who's good. I'm not going to give you what you think is good for you if I know it's really ultimately going to harm right. you. Right, and that that reminds me, like, that the thought I have right now is, like, God is not a doormat. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, you could do all that, and, and he's going to love you, but he's, yeah. he's also a just God. Right. And, but his justice is the righteous justice. Mm-hmm. So, like, as you mentioned, um, like, naturally we're going to want to, like, retaliate, mm-hmm. right? But our justice, our, our um, idea of justice isn't always righteous, mm-hmm. right? But when god is justice um then it is always holy and right right but i say that to say like god's character his attributes doesn't change you know what i mean like there's Mm -hmm. nothing that you can do there's no sin there's no no level of brokenness like Mm -hmm. um any of that that will change who he is Mm -hmm. you know what i mean he is still a loving god he is still a just god Mm -hmm. so he sees your pain he sees the pain of all of his children, you know, and in his perfect timing, in his right, uh, glorified, righteous, holy timing, justice will be served, yeah. you know, and then vengeance are his no matter what it may look mm-hmm. like. It could be something like super like deep and, and big or something like like really small, you know. Um, yeah, and I found that the best vengeance where he says, like, leave vengeance to the Lord. Mm-hmm. Um, when someone wrongs you or hurts you or life just sucks. Mm-hmm. Um the most beautiful vengeance is seeing someone come to know God and feel the, the contrition and the, the sorrow, the true sorrow in their heart for what they did Mm. rather than them being cursed or something bad happening to them. Cause I think the closer you grow to God, the less you wish bad upon your enemies. Like you, you, you start to see your abuser as someone who's been abused as someone who's hurt themselves because hurt people hurt people. Yeah. And honestly, that's exactly what helped me forgive my own father. Yeah. Like truly forgive him Mm -hmm. because I'm just like, why wait, hold on. Like, I don't think you were, like, willfully wanting to right. hurt me like this. Like, something is hurting you. And that you don't even know how exactly. to fulfill the role that you were gifted. Exactly. So that yeah. helped me tremendously to, like, yeah. really forgive my dad. And that's why we're, we are where we are now. Amen. Mm-hmm. I love that. And I like how you said um, God's character doesn't change. Mm-hmm. So it's a fact. Like, what God says is truth like there is no debating it if god says that he sees us and he hears us and especially the first time he reveals that is in the story of a single mom you have to remind yourself of the truth that god sees everything you're going through everything you've been through all the struggles that you're facing the doubts the insecurities the fears if you're not believing it that means that you're not seeing his truth Mm -hmm. so when it says right here she literally says i have now seen the one who sees me like God had always and already seen her. Mm -hmm. She just didn't see him Mm. seeing her. So you have to choose to change your perspective to see the one who sees you and allow him to undo the hurt, undo the pain and redeem your story and redeem everything, your parenting, all of it. Um, And then I like how the, the name that we get for him being El Roy, it was derived from the place where the angel of the Lord came to speak to her. And it was a well. 
and like a well is a constant source of water and mm-hmm. nourishment and it's just another example of him being the living water mm-hmm. for us like he's everything we need mm-hmm. he is going to provide for you if there's something that you don't have it's for a reason and maybe it's a test maybe he's trying to grow you or find you or maybe you really just don't need it <laughs> yeah no that's real and um i've really learned to instead of asking why because i've had those same questions like mm-hmm. why why is this the reality of my family why this why that um instead of instead of really asking like why why this i really have like and i fe- feel it in my heart shifted like okay like this must be happening to my life because you're going to use it for your for Absolutely. my good and your glory like whichever way possible because we've gone through some some really hard times Mm -hmm. and um it's very easy to just like kind of like stay in that mentality of just like that victimized mentality like it can't get better than this and I will be honest there was a time that I kind of lived there Mm -hmm. where it was just like I was hoping for something better but I didn't know what that hope was so I'm just like this is it is what it is like this is just my life um but I really do feel like your heart posture really does changes when um, instead of asking him, why is this happening to me? You remember that God is good and that he is just so whatever it is that is happening or you're going through in your life, that he will use you to really minister to somebody else, you know, like in, in a deeper level that if you if it wasn't happening the way the way that God will move. I don't know how to, I don't know how to like fully like end that sentence, but like, yeah. it's just everything. He's very, he's sovereign. Mm-hmm. Let's just put it that way. He's sovereign. So where, where it's happening in your life, it's not in vain. Absolutely. That's so beautiful. Um, I feel like we could literally just no, stay yeah. in this scripture forever. <laughs> so good. Like mm-hmm. if you haven't read Genesis 16, go and do so today after you get off of this podcast. <laughs> get off of this podcast I mean, sorry. <laughs> but yeah so i want to talk more about like what um the real life struggles are like dive a little bit more into that so i know that um back to the broken family thing i think there's truth in that mm-hmm. because god's design for the family is for a reason if god who is three in one father son holy spirit always existed eternally in community and he made us in his image meaning the godhead all three godheads one god he designed the family for that you know Mm -hmm. like man and woman are meant to come together as one in marriage and then god being the center of that Mm -hmm. like that's you know it kind of resembles the trinity and then the children are the like addition to that that we're entrusted with to really they're they're borrowed from god like Mm. we are when you switch your perspective of parenting to oh this is my child like i created them i am solely responsible for them and and everything about them and you shift your perspective to know this is a child of god this is god's kid before Mm -hmm. it's my kid Mm -hmm. and he loves my child more than i ever could imagine that Mm -hmm. like parents know how much you love your kid god loves your child more than you ever could and knowing that he entrusted that child to you to raise, to teach, to disciple, to learn, for them to learn who God is through you and how you live your life. I just, it changes the way you look at parenting and the way that you live out your life on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. Um, and the, the difficulty in being a single parent is that that paradigm, that structure is not the way it was intended to be yeah which we live in a broken world it's the reality of many uh, no matter what your circumstances whether you are a widow or you were never married and the relationship didn't work out or you know it it was a divorce or you were abused or whatever led you to being a single parent god can still redeem that you know and yes i think when we think about it being a broken family we shouldn't live there and let it discourage us but instead, let us drive drive us deeper into reliance on God as yeah. our father, as our provider, as our partner in life. Exactly. Exactly. Because 
Um, I know it's in John, I believe it's John 15, uh, but essentially um, where we can't bear much fruit without Jesus mm. as our as our vine. Yeah. You know, and he is the vine and we are the branches. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So I always think about that whenever either I'm tempted or my mind starts to um, veer towards relying on my own understanding mm-hmm. or my own strengths. And because I, you know, I did that a lot before I even knew Christ, you know, mm-hmm. like trying to understand everything, all those circumstances yeah, yeah. and everything. <laughs> and I put on the savior complex, all this good stuff. And so um, I always think about that, that truth that without him, we can't bear much fruit with mm-hmm. without him. I can't offer anything. I, I'm, I'm nothing without him, you know, and that he is the sor- my source. Yeah. So, and it's so interesting too, because like in the beginning of, the word we see with Genesis, um, not Genesis, in Genesis and with Adam and Eve, he says, be fruitful and multiply. Mm. And it's so cool because that, uh, for the most part, he's talking about reproducing. Like, and th- it's just so cool how he just gives us so much, like, yeah. uh, so much gems <laughs> in his word. And yes. it's all, like, intertwined. So, like, being him being the vine and us being the branches, we can't bear fruit without him. And literally, children are literally the fruit of our wombs. Yeah, like, yeah. so how can we care for the fruit that is our children without him, without being plugged in, rooted right. into the source, wow. into the vine? So, and and even in that, like, growing in the fruits of the Spirit. Oh, Lord, nothing will grow you more in the fruits of the Spirit than being a parent. And, re- and, and when I say that, it's because you realize how much you're lacking in them. <laughs> how much you lack goodness, patience. Uh, self control uh <laughs> selflessness mm. humility all these things oh mm. lord if you want to enjoy parenthood and not just live in a false like ignorance is bliss you're gonna have to do a lot of work on yeah. that and really rely on the lord because you don't have to do it in your own strength yeah but um back to the the structure of a family right when you don't have both parents there one the one parent who is the main, the sole provider, even if you're not, even if you have like shared 50-50 custody, when the kids are in your care, you're 100% the, the sole right. provider. And that is so hard, especially from a woman's point of view, because you are forced to tap, to be both, to be mom and dad, to tap into masculine um, traits and try to raise up a child as both. And we're, we were not designed for that. Like, Keep in mind, we're coming from a, a Christian perspective here, and I wholeheartedly believe in, like, traditional gender roles. Uh, I know that many people don't, but I do because I believe that God literally, like, it's undeniably a man is different than a woman. Right. Like. In every sense of it. In every sense every of, sense of, it. Sense yeah, of so, it. um, when a family is supposed to have a man and a woman caring for these children and the man is not there or the woman's not there, that, that partner who's left has to pick up the the what is the word pick up the pick up the slack yeah and provide in a way that they're not designed to and so that in and of itself is burdensome it's heavy Mm -hmm. it's hard you're literally having to learn something that is so unnatural to you because parenting already is pretty unnatural to us (laughs) like it's hard even as a woman to learn to be a mom but now you have to learn how to be a mom and a dad yeah or provide get resources or people a village that can be that father figure or that male figure or that that womanly figure in your children's life right because right. it's very real for the da- the single dads out there too mm-hmm. i know we're talking in, a, in an aspect you know you're a single mom and, I, and we were both raised by single moms so naturally like we're, we're talking on there but i don't want um any of our single dads that may be listening to us mm-hmm. to feel like they're left out because I know that it could be very real for for Absolutely. you guys too. Everything that we're saying, like especially what you just said, Britt, like um, you have to put on a, a, a nature of something that you're not, a, a nature of someone that you're not created mm-hmm. in. You yeah. know what I mean? So of course it's going to be challenging. Absolutely. I think it's super adorable seeing a dad <laughs> try to do their daughter's hair. I think it's super yeah. adorable. Um, but I get that. <laughs> like it doesn't come natural to you. Like yeah. personally, I can't throw no football. So, <laughs> like, I can, but. I can, but like we, we are also being sensitive to to those oh, single single dads out there as mm-hmm. well. Um, yeah. yeah, I can't speak from that point of view, Correct. but I can exactly. speak from the observations yeah, yeah, of yeah. a man. I I know many single dads, and I know that they struggle with being the disciplinarian and knowing how to talk about emotions and things like that because 
our society doesn't normalize that men have emotions too and right. how do you how are you how do you become emotionally intelligent that emotionally could be a aware, topic of itself emotionally healthy <laughs> and being a parent like if you want to be a good parent which i think most people in our generation are really really trying to do the work on us so we can be better parents to our kids yeah. than our parents were to us and that's not to throw shade on our parents but that's the goal right yeah. like i want my daughter to be a way better mom than i ever was to her right, right. um so yeah it's <laughs> hard out here mm-hmm. it's really hard out here mm-hmm. and um just know that you're not alone. And I know that in church, church circles, um, society is already hard, you know, being a single parent. It's not, the world is not built for that. Um, and we talked about that with God's design and stuff, but it's hard in the church when you're a single parent because it's like there's not really a place for you necessarily because you have like young adults ministries, single ministries, and you're single, but you've also weren't always single Mm -hmm. to some extent whether you were married or just in a relationship or whatever but you also have a kid so it's like you're not you've kind of been there done that and you're coming back around to singleness rather than always having been single never married or never like had a partner and and children a family um and then women's ministries or men's ministries they tend to be more focused on okay well you're an adult now you're 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 a woman so it's already kind of implied that you're married and a lot of it is focused on marriage and family and stuff like that and it can be hard to find a place as a single mom or a single dad um but it's a reality like i said for many and so we need to have a space for that and not to glorify or or um encourage single being a single parent but to to literally have a seat at the table for the single parent and help them walk through life as Christians, just as everyone else um, has, you know? Right, exactly. I, I think you said it perfectly. Like, yeah, it's not to encourage, you know, to stay, mm-hmm. I guess, essentially in that mindset of, like, you're just being a single parent. Um, but I think it's to, ju- it's to walk with them mm-hmm. in through it, you know, yeah. and that God is able. Don't forget that God is able. Um, and he will provide all of your needs, all of them. And mm-hmm. that includes a partner yeah. um, when he wills it. So, but I think having that community within that, that season, um, of your life is so vital and to create that space is so vital to, to get through. Cause I, I really wholeheartedly believe that it takes a village to, to raise a child, you know, that's that's also another observation. Um, just growing up, um, I see like how my brother, uh, grew up and, um, it would have been amazing to have more of, um, of a great male figure, you know, um, in a community, uh, mm-hmm. a different type of community. Um, and even myself, like certain things that I saw and stuff, like it would have been great to have a community to pour into a, a good community mm-hmm. to pour back into us. Yeah. Like boys need men mm-hmm. and Ooh, yeah. the lack of godly men and good examples I really do feel like leads to a lot of this because um, most women, especially women who are really rooted in God, are willing to submit in in the biblical sense of just being a woman. You know, obviously it looks different for your personality and like your relationship relationship style and stuff, but um, men are, are born to be protectors, providers, leaders. And so we need more men stepping into those roles. And then also women we need to stop settling and this is a whole nother topic for another mm. day but um in relation to single parenting it's so important that you have community and that's why i stress the the importance of finding a place in church and if there is no place for that in church maybe god calling you to to make that ministry to make that small group to mm-hmm. you know whatever it is start talking about things start talking to your pastors people around you like uh, there are so many people there is a huge need yeah. for discipleship care and community for single parents not to just be looked at as like someone who is in need of help for their rent or things like that but you can still be a valuable contributor to society and to the church and to the world as a single parent but the reality is yes you are doing the work of two people and you're only one person and that's hard like balancing your schedule their schedule like 
or do you stay at home? Do you work? Do you work at home? Do you work uh, outside of the home? Like balancing that, dealing with the guilt that comes with feeling like you're not spending enough time with your child. But then when you are, you know, you need to provide and it's all relying upon you. And then the fear when you are working of like, oh, my gosh, if I lose this job, yeah. my whole livelihood wow, is going so to go. The security is gone. Like you are just tried in every single way, in every angle. But and it's hard. Like it's so hard sometimes. Um but it all points back to our need for God and yeah. really relying on him every single moment of every single day. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, I just want to tie it back to the struggles that single parents face are so real. Yeah. They're so real. Like, I have such a burden on my heart as a single mom for single moms because it's not what God intended. And that's why we feel the brokenness, you know? God's ways are always better, but we live in a sinful world, and so there's a lot of pain that comes from it. There's a lot of struggle that if things were the way he wanted them to be and and designed them originally, we wouldn't have to deal with that. Yeah. But what do we do with the reality, you know? We got to get into our word. We have to get into community. We have to press into God, rely on him, allow him to be everything we need. Yeah. (coughs) Excuse me, to show up in the areas that we're lacking in. Yeah, because if you really think about it, God gives us promises and he is a man of his word Mm -hmm. and all of his promises you can think of like any scenario that you're going through or any question that you may go through you can find a promise from god Mm -hmm. in the bible and he will come through yeah you know what i mean so when you you remember and meditate on these promises of god honestly like i feel like that it's a hope that we have in jesus that really empowers us to keep going You know, to keep parenting, to keep loving, to keep being there, to Mm -hmm. persevere, you know, uh, when we rely on the promises of God and who God is. And that's Mm why um, we say, like, just keep reading your Bible, keep drawing nearer and nearer to Jesus because he is a man of his word. He will come through in his promises. We see it time and time again in the Bible, and he has not changed, you know. And that in itself just – and I pray that you guys – feel this as well really does fire me up to just keep going no matter the circumstance yeah you know i can do all things through christ who strengthens me amen and just my last thought and then we're gonna tie it up here tie it up sum it up same thing (laughs) tie it up wrap it up up. up. there you go (laughs) (laughs) um i think and i and maybe i'm biased (laughs) But I really believe that if you're a single parent, I think you need to press into God even more because it's so easy to say to stay as a victim of your circumstances. And when, like we said before, when you stay in that place, your heart gets hardened yeah. and you're not allowing God to move in your heart. And then if he's not moving in you, how is he going to move through you? Ooh. You know, so really like take your focus off of yourself, your life, your circumstances and look at the need like what you're going through can always be used to help other people Mm -hmm. so i really want to encourage you if there's been something that god has put in your heart whether it's i don't know start a blog a podcast a youtube channel reach out to a friend um start a small group a ministry whatever it is like we need that because the one thing the enemy is going to come after is the family and i hate it i hate it so much and how many times do we allow him to just take over you know but we we already have the authority. We already have the victory. Remind yourself of God's truth. And as hard as it is, in times when you don't even believe it, get around people who can help you believe it or believe it for you. Mm -hmm. And just continue walking, racing towards him. And he will bring so much redemption, so much light, so much hope from all of the broken parts of your story, of your family, of your parenting. God can redeem. And it's hard dating as a single parent, even thinking about, a a random person coming into your life but god can do it like he literally adopted us into his family you know so why couldn't he do that for us and like Mm -hmm. bring us a partner who truly loves him first and foremost loves us and loves our children and is safe for them but how will we be able to choose that partner and have that discernment have that wisdom and have those boundaries if we're not pressing it to him first you know exactly so So i didn't cry amen i did cry you know, maybe that's a toxic trait of me. I don't let people cry, see me cry, really. Dang, we need Sometimes to I wish I would cry on this podcast because <laughs> I feel like y'all would 
it would resonate deeper. No, I, <laughs> I, I wish we would switch because I feel like I'm it's so dead. easy for me to cry. That's so funny. <laughs> but yeah, I really want to tie it back to God being Abba, our father. Mm-hmm. We see him reveal himself as Abba as well in scripture. And he is a father to the fatherless. And on the cross, it says right here in this devotional, um, so God, our father, cares for single mothers in their lonely cries of desperate need. He does the same for our children separated from their fathers by divorce death incarceration deportation or other traumas and mothers this goes for both um he's a loving father who keeps close personal watch on each of our children and remember we are his children too so he does that for us as well he is not a distant father but an up close and personal abba to the father's fatherless children but here's where it gets better on the cross jesus became fatherless to a degree that our children will never have to be Mm. when i forget exactly what he says but he says like father like why have you forsaken me and um he set aside his mighty power and took on our vulnerability he exposed himself to abuse abandonment and death like abandonment is such a a a root uh, or a branch that comes out of being a single yep. growing up in a single parent yep. household and that literally is a a like a chain that that we can stay chained to and yep. shackled to if we don't release it to god um and he did this all because he saw and heard how our sin makes us suffer like he chose to go through what we go through when we're over here like i don't want this pain anymore he chose to do it mm-hmm. so that he can relate to us because he knew it was our reality And he lives even now. He died on the cross to defeat sin. But guess what? He came back. He rose again and he still lives to this day. I think it's so beautiful how it ties back to him being the living water because it's an endless well, an endless source of life for us in every way that our souls could ever need. That nothing, no partner, no spouse, no food, no nothing in this world can satisfy but him. Yeah. And I just think that's so beautiful. Yeah, that's so encouraging. Like, there's something that we can hold on to, mm-hmm. something that we can stand firm on, you know, especially when, like you said, abandonment and it's being a single parent and everything where we don't know if this thing or this person or anything is going to stay. Mm-hmm. But we know and that better than not, everything in this world right, exactly. is temporary. God exactly. is the only eternal one. Exactly, and the, the fact that we can just hold on to that, mm-hmm. it brings so much peace. Yeah, so much peace. Yeah, mm-hmm. one of His promises in Scripture, and we'll leave you with this: If you were raised by a single parent, if you've ever experienced abandonment, and if you are a single parent, is He promises to never leave nor forsake us, ever. And I just hope that you hold on to that. Dive into Scripture um let us know in the comments what has mm-hmm. been your experience yes. um and what what did you take away from this conversation i feel like it was kind of everywhere but we were really just trying to like let god lead and just yeah candidly talk about this um but i think we could do like a lot more topics this could probably be a series maybe it could be know. like a, a parenting series yeah. and we can talk a lot more about it because like i mean i can talk about dating uh being a single mom entrepreneur being a single mom in ministry that's a whole nother thing there's so many of like your experience being a single not a single uh <laughs> having a single mom raise you oh and, like, yeah the daddy issues how god has redeemed our stories with our dads Ooh, yes that in and of itself there's so much to this so let yeah. us know Please, what is a struggle that you you have faced in in this realm yeah. of life yeah and um yeah let's let's pray yes <sighs> father god we just thank you that you are our father, God, that you are Abba, Lord, that you are a father to the fatherless, God, that you are a father to the people who have fathers, God, uh, as great as our, our earthly fathers may be, you are even greater. And as as not great as our earthly fathers have been, Lord, that you are um, everything that we could ever need, God, that you redeem our stories, God. I thank you that anyone right now who may be struggling with um, abandonment issues, God, I pray that you would just remind them, Lord, speak to their hearts, their souls, and and truly help them believe that you would never leave them nor forsake them and that they would forgive those who have left them hurt them abuse them god i pray lord god for just redemption in all the areas that may feel broken in their hearts in their lives in their families god i pray for reconciliation in in co-parenting relationships in marriages in mother-daughter relationships father-daughter relationships father 
um, son relationships, mother son relationships. Lord God, I pray that you would just redeem the families. God, we know that the family is the first ministry, God, and and no other ministry matters. No business, no no ministry in church, no small group matters if if our home life, if our family life life is not um, healthy and and in check. Lord God, so I pray, God, that you would do the hard work. Um, or uh, help us to do the hard work, God, not in our own strength, or our own power, but by your power, by your spirit that dwells in us. I pray, God, that you would give encouragement and hope to every person listening right now. I pray that you would remind every single parent listening, God, that they are seen, that they are known, that they are loved, that they are not doing this alone contrary to popular belief or what they what lies they may be believing that is alone that they may feel god that you would redeem that feeling of loneliness god that no lie from the enemy would have its place in their minds in their lives in their hearts in their homes god that they would see that they have value even now even in this and then and that this may be a temporary season for them and that they would uh, take advantage and make the most purpose out of it as possible, Lord God, to just advance your kingdom and to know you deeper and to make you known, God. We thank you, God, and we love you. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen.